Welcome to Leadership Live. I'm Daphna Horowitz, and this is a podcast for leaders like you who want practical tips to apply in leading your business, your people, and yourself. Now, I know that leadership is a skill that can be learned, and this podcast is about doing just that. Every week, I'll talk about what really works. You'll learn to shift your mindset and practice from being good at what you do to getting great at leading people who are good at what they do so that you can get the business results that you want. Whether you're a first-time manager, entrepreneur, or seasoned executive, you're at the right place. This podcast takes you from talented expert to extraordinary leader. So get ready to master your mindset, inspire your team, and elevate your business. Welcome once again to Leadership Lab. It's wonderful to have you here. And the topic for today is Groundhog Day. So here we are. And today we're going to talk about our perception of time and what does it really mean and how are we experiencing time in this crazy and interesting and challenging period that we're in, in this pandemic. So the first thing that I want to reflect on is that I think many of us are feeling that our sense of time is a little bit distorted. And what I mean by this is that on some levels, I know that I wake up some mornings and I'm not sure what day it is. Is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? It feels like because we're so restricted in our movement and where we can go, every day can feel like it's maybe a little bit of more of the same. We wake up. We might not, our kids, we don't have to take them to school for those that are not going to school. You don't have to wake up at a specific time. We are much more laid back in terms of our understanding of time. I've also noticed that for myself and for many of my clients and and people that I interact with, we seem to be going to sleep quite a bit later at night and waking up quite a bit later in the morning. So I certainly have some clients that are avid sports people like cyclists or runners And many of them have expressed that they have now started their sport routine a little bit later in the morning than what they're used to. So if they were used to waking up at five o'clock, they may be doing that at six o'clock or seven o'clock. So somehow our sense of time and the flow of time has been for sure disrupted and also distorted in terms of how we experience it. So there's something about that. And then there's also the feeling of, for many of us that are working at home, and having a lot of Zoom meetings or virtual meetings or whatever virtual platform you're using, we find that we might be meeting a lot of people. We might be focusing on different tasks in a different way, but we're in the same place. We're not moving around. Even if we would go into the office and then go and have a cup of coffee and meet some people there, or along the way as we're walking from meeting to meeting, we would meet people and have a little chat or have a connection moment. Now we're literally sitting in the same place every day and experiencing just sameness. So even though the people are different and our interactions are different, our tasks are different, we're doing different things, we are still very much sitting in the same place, many times staring or looking at a computer screen and not really experiencing that movement and the flow of interaction. So that's also impacting our time. And there has been a phrase that's been bandied about Um, that, you know, that people have been talking about, which is Zoom fatigue. And Zoom fatigue means that when we're sitting in one place, having conversations, but constantly looking at the screen or doing it in the same way, it also starts to distort our sense of time. So what's happening is that a lot of our days feel like it might be more of the same. Instead of having that variety, being able to go out, being able to have a cup of coffee in a coffee shop, meeting people, interacting with people live and in person, we are in the same place. Our kids are often with us if we have kids or, you know, whoever we're seeing, it's the same people in the same house, in the same place. And then we have these little breaks where we interact with people online, but there's a lot of sameness that's going on. And that can get us feeling a little bit like we're stuck in a place of limbo. And perhaps even starring in our own version of the movie, Groundhog Day. 
And that's why I chose the title for this topic today. So maybe we each have our own version, our own, each movie for each person looks different, but we might be waking up and saying, okay, more of this, a different day, but more of the same. If we are feeling that sense of limbo, if we are feeling a little bit of, okay, different day, but more more of the same, then this is something that can really bring us down. It can really affect our mood. It can affect our level of happiness, our level of feeling like we're productive and achieving something in this world. And that is really not, not something that's, I suppose, really good for us to live with. It's something that we want to change. And it's something that we want to make sense of. And today I really want to try and help to make sense of this, maybe understand this, and also offer some tips in terms of how can we deal with it? Are there some things we can do to shake things up, even though a lot of stuff is really outside of our control? Is there something we can do to help how we perceive this or how we interact or how we manage our own days so that we minimize that feeling of Groundhog Day? So just a little bit of uh, context perhaps, about Groundhog Day for those people who haven't watched the movie. I love the movie, so please do go ahead and watch it on my recommendation. And it really is about a guy who finds himself on an assign a work assignment away from home. He wakes up in the hotel one morning, lives that day, goes to sleep at the end of the day, and then wakes up the next morning to experience the same day, exactly the same day with the same incidents, the same events, the same experiences. And this happens day after day. And finally, he twigs that actually something's going on here and this is going to continue and let, until he changes something in the way that he's running his day. So then he starts to experiment with different things and he realizes he was a character that was quite arrogant and needed some adjustments to his attitude and behaviors. So he started to play with those and started to really do good things. And he still kept waking up to the same day. And eventually, not to spoil the story, he needed to really change something within himself that it wasn't just doing good. It was also doing good from a place of being good, of really wanting to do good to actually change the day. And then kind of earn the right to move into the next day. So that's basically the outline of the story. And I think that it very much relates to a little bit of how we are experiencing this time at the moment. I think there's that anticipation of waking up in the morning and are things going to be different? Are the numbers going to go down? The number of cases or infections or serious cases, are they gonna go down? Are restrictions going to be opened up? Is something going to shift in our situation? And we have this expectation of waking up in the morning and hoping that something is going to be different. And many times it's not, and most days it's not, and it's kind of waking up to the same thing. So we go about our things and we go about our day and our Zoom meetings and our people and our family and the things that we need to take care of, the things are getting done, but what is the feeling that's accompanying that? How are we being within ourselves in this time? And how does that feel? So how do we make sense of it? This is the question that I want to look at first. And there's a couple of things I want to suggest as, as thinking points on this topic. So the first thing that I want to suggest is that if we look at our perception of time, how do we perceive time on a regular day-to-day -day basis? Now, we know, and I think we can all relate to the experience, that when we are busy doing something that we really enjoy, when we're in the flow of, la of, of our passion, when we're involved in a project that is very meaningful to us, we know that we can be so immersed and so focused on it that five hours can pass and it feels like five minutes where time just flies because you're doing something that you enjoy, you're hyper-focused or you're doing something that you love and time seems to fly just like that. Five hours passes and it feels like five minutes. At the same time, we also know that the opposite can happen. So we know that when we're doing something that we really don't enjoy, something that we hate, or something that is really not, we kind of forced into, you know, we have to, one of those shoulds, we know that in that situation, five minutes can seem like five hours. And I know that when I'm going on a run, for example, and I'm tired that day, or I haven't really eaten, and I'm not really feeling a top-notch energy, I know that those every meter seems to pass and take 10 minutes. And by the time I finish my run, it seems to take forever. 
And yet when I'm in top energy, top form, feeling good about myself, I've eaten, I've rested, I feel like things are going well, I can have a run of an hour and it feels like, wow, that was quick. I can't believe how quickly that passed. So we know that our perception of time really depends on what we're doing. And something that's w worth noting is that when we're in waiting mode, okay, that's when things seem to take forever. When we're waiting for something to happen, when we're waiting for something that's outside of our control to change, like waiting for a doctor's appointment, for example, time seems like it can take forever. It kind of stretches, right? And yet, we're in, when we're in action mode, when we're in focused mode, when we're in doing mode, focusing on things that bring us joy, things that we love, things that bring us meaning, then time can just fly. Then that's when time just seems to go past so quickly, we don't know where the time went. Think about that, that time, in a way, is not an absolute measure. It's something that does stretch or shrink based on what we're doing with it and how we're using it. So that's something to think about in terms of our Groundhog Day theme. Is there something that we can be doing differently? So I would say that if we're kind of waiting for the pandemic to pass and that's our mindset, it's a mindset of waiting, it's going to seem like it's taking forever, forever. But if it's a mindset of action, let's create our reality, let's create our future, let's be energized about it, we can actually help ourselves to have a different experience and have time pass quite quickly as well. The second aspect I want to look at is what our expectations are. Now, there is a definition, it brings to mind a definition of happiness that I know, which is happiness equals the difference between expectations and reality, okay? So there's what we expect to happen and what the reality is really bringing to us. So the more that our expectations are different from what the reality is, the more the, more the gap widens, the more unhappy we'll be. The more we can shrink the gap between expectation and reality, the more happy we can be. So there's an inverse proportion between our expectations and our happiness. And what's important to think about here is we can have expectations about things that are outside our control and we can have expectations about things that are within our control. So if we want to look at the expectations that are about things within our control, things that we can control, then we can really work with that and we can work at shortening the gap between expectations and reality and increasing our happiness. So actually, if we want to feel happy, we want our expectation and our reality to match. And that's where we want to know that we can't change reality. Reality is what it is that largely relates to things that are outside our control. And yet expectations are things that we can do. What we expect about something is totally within our mindset and within our way of thinking. So if we take, for example, the where we, you know, where we're living our life at the moment with the pandemic, if we wake up every morning expecting something to be different, expecting the restriction to change, that is completely outside of our control. This is with the policymakers, with government, they need to make those decisions. So if we wake up every morning expecting that to change, and then we look at the reality and the change hasn't happened, it's exactly the same, our unhappiness is going to be increased. That gap is going to be very wide. Yet, if we don't have any expectation, we know we're expecting this is where we are, this is how we're living, there's no control over reality, so I'm not going to expect it to be different, I'm actually going to wake up tomorrow morning expecting everything to be exactly the same, then our gap widens, our unhappiness decreases, and we actually can say, okay, then what reality do I want to create for myself today? How am I creating my day so that my happiness can be at the maximum because I'm going to control or, or you know take charge of my expectation i'm not going to expect something that's unrealistic another interesting thought for you to maybe take away and think about is that with the level of uncertainty that we're having at the moment and the rate of change or the pace of change that we're experiencing we actually are experiencing an enormous amount of change because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow anything can change many people are sitting with a lot of uncertainty about whether their business will survive, whether they'll have a job tomorrow, whether they'll be able to uh, get more clients um, in the next week. Those are the things that are totally uncertain 
and all changing all the time because all circumstances are changing. And yet with that level of change, which we don't know, even on the level of pandemic, what's going to happen? Are the numbers going to increase or decrease? Are the restrictions going to be increased or de decreased? That, that is also changing dynamically all the time. But at the same time, we are waking up to the same reality that our life hasn't changed significantly. We're not able to go out. Our freedom is restricted very significantly. We can't go out the way we want. We can't interact with the people that we want the way that we want to interact with them. We can't get together with people that we want to get together with. So we have this paradoxical kind of feeling that on the one hand, things are changing around us all the time. And on the other hand, we are waking up to similar days. From day to day, there isn't much that is allowing us to be as free as we want to be, to have the variety in our life that we want to have. And that's a very uneasy, uncomfortable place to be in, in that kind of paradox of constant, fast change and the feeling of limbo, of how do we work with something that, you know, doesn't feel like it's changing fast enough in terms of our freedom and our freedom to express and do what we want. So that's something to think about and then say, how do we create some structures that help us to still feel free within this restrictive environment that we're living in? And one thing I want to talk about at this point is morning routines. So I know that I have, I mean, there's a lot of talk about morning routines and what morning routines are, are those things that when you wake up in the morning, you have a certain routine that you stick to before you go about your day. So we have our regular routines. We know we go, we wake up, we go to the bathroom, we brush our teeth, we have breakfast. That's part of our normal routine. Sometimes it's really great to insert some things into those morning routines that actually bring a spark to our day and allow us to start the day with more energy and more positivity so that we, you know, set out on the best possible foot going forward. So, we can create our own happiness now. We don't have to succumb to external circumstances that are completely outside of our control and say, well, this is what's happening now. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to do with it. And get into that funk and that low mood that doesn't serve anyone. So going back to morning routines, I really wanted to share some thoughts about that and to say that I, for one, am a person that finds morning routines very, very hard. I find it hard to wake up in the morning. I'm a night owl for sure, and I go to sleep very late. I would prefer to wake up later in the morning, but I do believe this world has been made for morning people. I'm a night person. And so waking up in the morning is a quick dash to wake up and get out and do what I need to do and start my day. But over this period, I've really started to add a different element to my morning. And the way that I start my morning is while I'm still in bed, as I wake up, I already direct my thoughts to the kind of day that I want to have. So I start off by, instead of in the past, I'd used to wake up in the morning and think about what lies ahead for the day, what I need to do, what I need to plan, get into that action mode very quickly. Today or these days, I'm actually taking a couple of, literally it's 30, 30 seconds, a minute maybe at the most, to think about how I want to feel that today. What kind of a day is this going to be? And I fill myself with feelings of positivity and energy and intention for the best day that I can possibly have. And that's how I start my day. I push out the thoughts of all the things I've got to do and all the logistical stuff and really start flooding my system with positive thoughts and emotions and feelings about how my day should go ahead. So that's number one. Then I, then I think about one thing, one thing I can be grateful for, some kind of gratitude for my day. And often it's really just about being able to wake up energized, healthy, well, and, you know, physically able to move on and start my day. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing that I do is I actually make myself a cup of coffee. Sometimes my husband make, makes it for me, I have to admit. He's wonderful. And we might either together or just me on my own have coffee in the garden and make a point to go outside, breathe some fresh air, see the beautiful plants. We are in summer now, so that's an advantage. And to sit for a few minutes and just take this all in, take in a little bit of breath of nature and have my day start in a different way than that immediate dash into whatever it is that needs to be done. So I would suggest to you, think about how you can start your day in a way that's going to set you up 
for a little bit more joy, uh, something a little bit more exciting, something you can get passionate about or something that you can get excited about, energized about to begin your day in a way that's going to set you up well and get you out of the Groundhog Day funk as well. Another thing I just want to say on this point is that when we are feeling a little bit low, when we are feeling that our energies are down, exercise is one thing. Just get moving. So getting out, having a run, dancing around the room, putting on some good music, getting to action, physical activity can also help really a lot with getting out of that funk of a Groundhog Day feeling. And then I've often said this, but I'm going to repeat it again. When we can focus on doing something for someone else, that's also very helpful in terms of getting out of our own space of this is the more of the same, every day looks the same, how do we change it? If you focus on, or if you choose something to do for someone else, it gets you out of your space, that headspace of your own that you can be feeling down about or low energy about and doing something for someone else increases our energy and really gets us into a mode of feeling good about ourselves and what we've done. So that's something we can always do, something small for someone else you know, picking up the phone, calling someone, taking food over to someone who can't go out or someone who's in quarantine, doing those kind of things can really help us in terms of getting our outside of our own kind of low energy space and give us a good feeling about what we're doing and about our day. So I've given you a few things to think about, I hope. And I really would like to end off with the final thought that uh, my sister actually told me she saw on a bumper sticker. And I thought this this is a really, really good thought to leave you with as we talk about Groundhog Day. And the bumper sticker said, you're not having a crazy day. The day is having a crazy you. And this is something that we often tend to forget. So you might wake up and think, oh, this is just the worst day. Nothing's going right. I've spilled my coffee. I'm running late. I've got to get to the next meeting. And I'm five minutes late already. And like, just think, oh, it's already a bad day. But actually, it's not. The day is just a day. It's an immovable thing. It's a unit of time. It's a block in our universe. So who, which, which part of it is crazy? Who's having a crazy who? And when the day is just a day, yeah, things can go wrong. Yes, we, you know, sometimes we plan things and they don't work out the way that we intend. But if we can shift our mindset, if we can create our own reality, remember our perspective on time, our feelings of limbo versus uncertainty, our ability to manage our own expectations relative to reality and increase our happiness and really create some structures and routines that will help us to set off on the right foot and set off a start our day on high energy. Those are the things that are going to make a difference. So if we go back to the whole Groundhog Day story, what I really loved, and I don't remember the main character's name now, it slipped my mind, but if you go back to what he needed to do in order to earn the right to move into the next day, it wasn't enough for him to just do good things. And he played around with it. He did some good things. He realized he needed to, then he did things to his own advantage to get the goal or get some results that he wanted. And then he really realized something within him needed to ch shift. He needed to shift from the inside. It wasn't enough to just do good, to kind of check off the list of I've done this good, I've done this good, I've done this good. He needed to come from a place of desire, from a place of authenticity. How do I really believe in it? They aren't just doing good because it's there. I actually need to want to do good. And for him, it was such a mindset shift. And I think for all of us, when we look at our own Groundhog Day feelings, what is the mindset shift that we need from the inside in order to really embrace these difficult times and make something different of it? It starts within ourselves, how we think differently, how we view things differently, and then how we create our reality differently. And then we can really have beautiful days ahead and really just uh, enjoy our life within the challenging and trying circumstances that we're living in at the moment. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. And I will be back here next week, same time, same place, and wishing you a wonderful week ahead. Take care. And this wraps up another episode of Leadership Live. Thank you for joining us today. 
you can head on to my website at daphnahorovitz.com where you can download many resources, including a chapter of my book that will show you how to get through tough times and define a big vision for your leadership and your business. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and I'd be even more grateful if you'd share it with a friend, leave a review and a five-star rating so that I can continue to reach and support leaders just like you. Tune in next week to Leadership Live where talented people become extraordinary leaders.